Afternoon, Dean. Afternoon. Uh, with fourth, uh, obviously no longer available playoffs coming up, players on cautions and slight niggles perhaps, do, uh, do we approach this any differently to last week? It's interesting, I think that much went on in the game last week. When I was asked after the game, I still thought we could catch fourth. But um, obviously, I've got my maths wrong after that game. Um, no, I mean, listen, yeah, there's three games to go at least. We're hoping that it's four. Um, you know, uh, Norwich have, have got promoted convincingly, done very well this season. Um, you know, and they need to come to take the title. So it's our job to to make sure we put up a fight and you know keep our run going as well where we've got momentum and you know, I feel win, lose or draw on on Sunday we'll still have that momentum going but it's not in our nature to to you know sit down and not be up for the fight whether it's in training or or a match and we'll certainly be up for it on on Sunday. If you were to give some other players perhaps who haven't featured as much an opportunity is that a real chance for them to show that they can be involved come the playoffs? I think whenever you know, somebody comes in uh, when you change the team, that's an opportunity for them and it's then down to the, the players to take up that opportunity. Um, you know, I've always said that you know, it's not about me looking to please players, it's about players looking to please me and my coaching staff to get into the team. So, you know, uh, if we do decide to change a few, um, you know, John McGinn will certainly be one, uh, you know, being on, on 14 cautions. Um, but we've also are well aware of the, the ruling of, of the, the EFL. Um, you know, so uh, with that in mind, we'll, we'll pick our team and a, a team that we believe can go and beat Norwich. How pleased are you that it isn't going to be the last action until August? Have you had to cancel any holidays at all? <laughs> no, no, no holidays planned. I've got a, a daughter who's doing a GCSEs this year, so um, we haven't got too much planned at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, I'd, I'd like to be where Norwich and, and Sheffield United are. And full, full, full congratulations to, to both of them for the work they've done this season. But we've got an opportunity left to us now uh, to try and go up through the playoffs. So, you know, um, looking forward to it. And with Norwich still obviously having the title to play for, does that perhaps mean that the intensity can't really be lost on their part especially? No, it can't. I mean, I, I believe they need a point. Uh, Sheffield United have got a better goal difference. So, you know, if we were to, to go and beat Norwich and we've got a tremendous record at Villa Park over, over recent games and we need to maintain that because, you know, we're, we're going to have back-to-back -back full houses at, at Villa Park and uh, we want, want it rocking for both. It's nearly three months unbeaten now. How keen are you to keep that feet going, especially given what's ahead in the next few weeks? Yeah, we're keen to continue that, but we also know that you know uh, we're playing against you know the the champions elect, so to speak. If they they get that point, um, so we know what a tough game it's going to be. Daniel Fark has done has done really well. I think he's I think Norwich City have surprised a few this season. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not I'm not that surprised because I could see the potential that they had when I I coached against them last year with Brentford. Um, we we went to Norwich and beat them at Brentford, but. I always thought there there was a lot of potential with the, with the players that they had, and you know uh, I think the the signings they've made have strengthened them. Pukis, you know, uh, top goal scorer at the moment. So um, you know I'm not too surprised how well they've done, and uh, it's a great credit to everybody there. Yeah, you're a big fan the way they've gone about it. Yeah, very big fan. Um, you know they haven't you know uh, spent loads to go and do it. They've they've recruited quite cleverly. Um, you know, and the the players that have come in have fitted the style that you know Daniel's wanted to play, and um, you know uh, I think it's been a, a serious team effort. I mean, we can all look at um, Pukki's goals, but it's been a real team effort from them. We had our awards dinner on uh, <coughs> Wednesday night over at Villa Park. Uh, how worthy a double winner, John McGinn? Yeah, no, he was he was well worth it. Um, you know, I think everybody expected that as well. Um, you know, I always, I'm always one for the accolade of getting the players player because, you know, that's voted for from your peers who you train with every day and who you play with, um, you know, and to get the double with the supporters as well is, you know, a tremendous achievement really in his, his first full season in English football. Um, I've said before, uh, he's a joy to coach and a, a joy to, to manage. Um, you know, he's, you know what you're going to get from him each week. Uh, if he dips below a seven, you're very surprised. Um, you know he's uh, he's been been extremely good for us, and it does make me laugh when I've I've heard 
rumours about him running marathons before he turns up for the game as well, you know. Um, no, but he's a tremendous lad to have around the place and fully deserving of his, his awards. There was great selection, <coughs> uh, choice available for goal of the season. Uh, Jack at Rotherham won it. Would that have been your pick? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> um, you know, but it was voted for by our supporters. You know, it was a very good goal. Um, but for me, I know Jack went with the Hutton one against Birmingham City, which, you know, uh, would probably be my top two, but mine would be John McGinn's volley against Sheffield Wednesday, even though I wasn't there. I thought the technique for that was, was tremendous. Uh, some other news this week. Amwar Al Ghazi is going to be available for for playoffs. How pleased with that uh, decision to rescind the red card? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't fully surprised, as you could gather after the game. Um, you know, but it's great that you know the the panel have agreed with you know what I expected, and uh, you know, uh, an important player for us. And you know, the the sad part was that we actually missed him for the, the last 20 minutes of the, that game last Sunday. You said it was safe to say John might sit out this one. Tammy, where's he at? Would he have been ready if needed? Uh, in that case, will he be available next week? Yeah, Tammy's available if I need him on Sunday. I don't think I will play him Sunday. Um, I think he's probably better that he gets more training minutes and he's ready for the first playoff game. Particularly with the defenders, what chance of seeing the likes of Chester, Elphick, Hutton? <coughs> well, they're all available. Um, you know, um, Chesney's probably not played or, or trained as many minutes as the others, so. He's probably the only one who would be a risk to play, um, but the others are all available. So um, I'll sit down with the coaching staff later and uh, I've got an idea of the team in my head, um, but just want to run a few things by them as well. And how is uh, Courtney House progressing? Yeah, Courtney House has trained as well. So, you know, uh, hopefully he's come through it. I'll find out later today that, you know, uh, to see whether he's available for selection, but I'm hopeful that he is because it'd be important for us to, to make sure he gets some minutes as well before that first game. And so should Sunday pass without any incident, that's pretty much a full squad available for the playoffs? Yeah, no, it should yeah. it should pass without incident. Um, you know, it should be a good game as well. Two good footballing teams, uh, a full house and, um, you know, one team celebrating promotion and, you know, uh, one team roaring on to try and get promotion. Cheers, Dean. Thank you. Cheers.